in the top half of the fourth. A new left-hander out on the hill for Waterloo, Dylan Phillips, making his Waterloo Bucks pitching debut. We'll likely see Phillips in the starting lineup tomorrow for the Bucks. Phillips is a left-hander, six foot, 220 pound freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. Spent his true freshman season at Kansas State University this past spring. He went 0-1 in five appearances out of the bullpen, four and a third. Struck out four, one walk. Works in the upper 80s with a fastball, a curveball, and a changeup for Phillips. The teammate of former Waterloo Buck, Josh Culver. So Greg Anderberg with three RBI today for Waterloo. Two run, bottom half of the third for the box. Seven, eight, nine for St. Cloud. Stock, Elliott, and Wilcox. Stock from St. John's University in Collegeville, Minnesota, which is about 15 some minutes away, maybe closer to 20 from his home field at Joe Faber Field. In St. Cloud, Minnesota, right on the edge of St. Cloud. They all won Phillips. Fastball inside, one and one. Top of four, Waterloo five, St. Cloud two. Three run lead once again for the Bucs. Way high to add a fastball, two and one. Dylan Phillips was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Nebraska. His senior year of high school back in 2018. Two and one. Fastball there on the inside corner for strike two. Phillips, four pitches, two strikes. Lefty kicks and goes, sit down, he pumps Chatter past Stock. And there's a first down of the fourth. Dylan Phillips strikes out the first batter that he faces in his Waterloo box career. And now Zach Elliott will step in. Phillips from the stretch, he starts with a Right foot a little bit in front of the left, working from this stretch. Wave and a miss there on a changeup. Great start for Waterloo here to the 2019 season. Oh, one breaking ball there for strike two. Phillips might end up starting for Waterloo at some point. Bucks are still trying to figure out which pitchers are going to be starters and which pitchers are going to be relievers. They know Connor Anderson is going to be their closer. Oh, two, wave and a miss, sit down on a curveball. Anderberg picks it out of the dirt and throws it to first. That was a nasty curve thrown by Dylan Phillips. Two to three, finishes off Zach Elliott, now Dustin Wilcox. Wilcox digs on in. Plays in the NSIC in the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference. There's three players in the starting nine right now for the Rocks who play in the NSIC. Barth from Augustana, Klein from Minnesota State Mankino, and Wilcox from Minot State. First pitch, fastball there on the outside corner. Dillon is working well. Nine pitches, seven strikes. Oh, and one. So Wilcox, a fairly even stance. A little bit of a crouch. Fastball way high and away, one and one. Phillips is one of those players that, that certainly looks like he's going to have an extremely exciting collegiate career. The one one. Curveball, strike two in the outer half. Not only can he pitch as he's showing here, we haven't even seen. His best side, or at least his best side that he had in his freshman season, he set the Kansas State program record for most home runs by a freshman with 11 this year. 1-2, hook, sit down, and the inning is over. We move on to the bottom of the fourth. Dylan Phillips strikes out the side. 
to the fourth we go, the bottom half. Campos, Ferguson, and Gitter. When we return, Waterloo leads. Defeated the Phils. Five to three. San Francisco over Miami, three to one. A late comeback by the San Francisco Giants in that game. The Rockies over the Diamondbacks, 11 to 10 in extra. And Boston, New York was postponed. Strike one on the outside corner from Phillips to Carew. We're going to make the, that game in August. No balls and a strike from Dylan Phillips. And the full scoreboard is back. Wave and a miss. Had a good Dylan Phillips offering down and in. So no balls and two strikes from Phillips to Carew. Dylan Phillips. Out of the Waterloo bullpen has five whiffs on 14 pitches. Five swinging strikes. That is nuts. Electric stuff shown so far. The 0-2. Change up down and away. 1-2. and two. 15 pitches, 11 strikes from Dylan Phillips. He might be getting an audition to start right here. 1 and 2. Lefty kicks and deals. A grounder foul up the third base side. On the Box Radio Network, powered by 1650, the fan. Just a gorgeous evening in Waterloo. And Carew has been put out twice today. Saw the Bucks quite a bit last summer. Playing for the St. Cloud Rocks. 1-2, grounded towards second. Here is Campos. Gloves on the run, gathers and throws to first. In time for the out. 4-3, retires Ben Carew. And here's Thomas Delgadillo. Delgadillo, pardon me. Delgadillo, 0 for 2. Ground out, and he reached down an air. Left on left. First lefty for Dylan Phillips to face. And the only one in this lineup. Dylan kicks and goes wave and a miss. Had a fastball in her half, 0 and 1. Now balls and a strike. Delgadillo. Looks at a 0 1 breaking ball that misses down and in. One ball and a strike. Dylan Phillips, uh, one of two Kansas State players on this Waterloo Box team. The Box also have two players from Northern Colorado. Getter and Anderson. One, one nasty breaking ball that Delgadillo swings over the top of as it skips away from him. One and two from Phillips here to Delgadillo. Has the pants pulled up high. Showing off the socks. An elbow guard, a long compression sleeve on the right arm. 1-2. Could not get him to bite at that changeup down and away. So the count even at 2 from Dylan Phillips to Thomas Delgadillo. In the Northwoods League, you see a lot of teammates playing on the same team together. This is lifted into shallow left center field and over the lunge of Sam Olson. As Thomas Dylan Gadillo is on with a bloop single. Tyler Finke gets a chance. That's the first man to reach against Dylan Phillips today. Third hit of the ball game for the St. Cloud Rocks. Last year, the Bucks had two players from Kent State, Ryan Lane and Patrick Ferguson. There's Ferguson on your screens now for those of you watching live on Presto Sports. They had the Rutgers four. There's Phillips to Finke. First pinch off the plate, one and oh. Carmen Sclafani, Eric Reardon, Kevin Welsh, and Luke Bowerbank. One and oh again from Phillips. Change up just off the plate, 2-0. Oh. Phelps has leaned a lot on that change piece today. Two and oh here from Dylan. Looking over and he picks to first. 
Dogadillo bluffing like he was going to move to second. He jab stepped to his right and then darted back to the bag. Waterloo has a couple of Iowa players coming in later this season. 2 0 -oh, wave and a miss at a fastball downstairs. Let's see, other Bucks playing for the same college last season. You had Tyler Sandoval and Matt Whalen from Colorado Mesa. 2 1 down and in. 3 and 1 here to Tyler Finke. Tends to happen in Woodbat Leagues, especially from programs that are a little bit further away from the team they're playing at. 3 1 fastball down and in. Ball four. He walked Tyler Finke. And now two men are on for Jordan Barth, representing the tying run at the plate. Barth is grounded out and singled today. Delgadillo and Finky, the two men out there. Some good speed for the St. Cloud Rocks. Barth settles in a 422 hitter this spring at Augustana. Ground ball towards the left side. Backhanded by Little Jim. Steps on third for one. Throw to first is knocked down by Ferguson. It's a fielder's choice. Five unassisted. As Jordan Barth reaches safely. Good play by Little Jim down the line. To pick up that second out of the inning. Gus Stagger. One for two. A double on a strikeout. Steiger is hit no worse than 311 in his two collegiate seasons at SDSU. He hitches 245, though. With the St. Cloud Rocks last summer. Six doubles and a triple for Steiger. Fastball floats high away from him. 1 and 0. Oh. The box will have some action out in their bullpen. 1 0. Oh. Grounded to our insurance stop. Sam Olsen cannot make the play. It's under his glove and into left. Rounding third, Finky. He'll score. On uh, what might end up being hit as a Sam Olsen error. That ball is shot right underneath his glove. And it is an error. An unearned run comes across against Dylan Phillips. On uh, that weak tapper to short. So Finky scores on the error. Barth up to second. All three runs allowed by Waterloo today have been unearned. That is not a promising sign for their defense. Cam Klein steps in, 0 for 1, a walk and a strikeout today. Phillips misses outside with a fastball, 1 and 0. The Bucks defense. On the left side of the infield has not been necessarily great this season. 1-0. Oh. Try going out of the inside corner. That was error number two of the season for Sam Olsen. 1-1 one one to Klein. The Bucks will have 6, 7, and 8. Do up in the bottom half of the fifth. This is the St. Cloud 6 hitter. And Cam Klein at the plane. The right-hander throwing a little bit out in the Rocks pen. 1-1 one, one lined into right field and down for a base hit. Let's see if they run on Getter. Running through stops on his Barth. The throw home is more than enough in time as Barth slides right into Anderberg who steps over Barth. Jake Getter with an absolute cannon out in right. And a few words being said back and forth by some Bucks players. I think Anderberg is trying to calm the situation down. And we'll be back in the bottom half of the fifth. Uh we wait about an hour or so and home opener for the Duluth Huskies. They trail the Oak Park Express 5-3. to three. Express trying to get back on track after a very tough opening series in Bismarck. They had 61 runs, lost all four games. And on that opening series at home. They had Duluth yesterday with a win. Now they are up in Duluth for a home and home. New players coming in for the Express. 
Horner is in there. Think it's Peterson by Bart. That's Ferguson at first. Who is in? He takes the first pitch ball at 87. Not sure the defensive strategy behind that one. But in front of the bag is Ferguson. I don't think Peterson's looking to bun here, but he will bat against the lefty Phillips as he has a big hack at that one, 84 miles an hour. He missed it, and it's one and one. It was a full count. Uh, Tristan Peterson, he took one to the back, took his base. Very next batter, Ryan Robleski took one to the back. Well, hit batters this inning. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Phillips. This one is hit in the air, right field. Going back on it is Brooks. He's at the warning track. And he just barely has room. Moving up from second to third is Tristan Peterson. Plenty deep to move him over. Staying at first is Robleski. So runners on the corners with one out. As a loud first out of the inning for Trace Peterson. We'll go down as a sacrifice for Peterson. Here's Aaron Simmons from UW Stevens Point. That's the big hit of the day for the Honkers. That got that five run six started. A solo blast off the Riverwalk Apartments. Very nice apartments that hang over the right field side of Mayo Field. An excellent view. A lot of people up there today. Watching the Honkers now take on Waterloo. They lead it by one. Runners on the corners. Another RBI chance for Aaron Simmons. First pitch, lefty lefty is in there for a strike. Fastball right down the middle. And it's 0-1. Simmons can knock another one out of the ballpark. That would break this one open. Thomas Walker's bullpen, only three more outs to get. They lead it by one. It'd be nice if it's more than that. 0-1 pitch. Simmons, Linda right field. That's a base hit, an RBI single for Aaron Simmons. Stopping at second is Robleski. Peterson is in, and the great day for Aaron Simmons continues. An RBI single, hit number three. It's 7-5 Rochester. Have a day, Aaron Simmons. Third time he's reached. Went down and got it. Dumped it into right field right in front of Brooks. And the Honkers have a two-run lead and looking for more. Here's Evan Berkey. Simmons has been playing all around in the field. Had a great play defensively early on in the game. Actually... And a diving catch, it was a sack fly, but maybe saved an extra run. That's coming to play now as the first pitch to Berkey is blocked in the dirt. Now there goes Robleski for third snap down, close play, and save. What a slide by Robleski, able to keep his hand on the base. Good throw by Rubicaba, and deciding last minute to go to third was Robleski. He's able to get in there with a smile back to the dugout. Good slide. He's at 90 feet away from home. Honkers looking for another insurance run. Runners on the corner. Simmons is at first. Robleski at third. Evan Berkey the batter. Honkers trying to break it open. They lead it 7-5. to five. They've out hit Waterloo 11-5. One-oh pitch. Comes inside. Gets underneath. Rubicaba. No one moving up anywhere. And it's going to be two balls. No strikes on Evan Berkey. Waterloo offense has been completely silenced in this game from a hitting perspective. They have not gotten a hit since the third inning. They had some walks in there, scored a couple of them in that fifth inning because of some bases loaded walks, but no hits. Had five quick ones off Lamasters, but he settled in. Evan Larson did it. Evan right back up the middle on a rocket. Dropped right in front of Mike Neister, and it's 8-5. The Honkers have scored seven unanswered runs. That run will be charged to Christofferson. Book on him is closed. Now the two runners aboard will be charged to Phillips. A couple earned runs in there for Christofferson, both coming in because they were hit by pitches. Two on, infield a bit in this time, and here's the first pitch to Mitchell Allen. Misses outside with a curveball. 1-0 the count on him. If there's one guy who's maybe challenging Aaron Simmons for player of the game, it's this guy right here. He's reached four times. He's got a couple of doubles in there. A run scored. But Simmons, a fantastic offensive day at the plate. Count is 1-0, lefty on righty. 
Swing and a miss. Fastball at 85. He was behind it. It's one and one. Looking ahead to the Waterloo ninth inning. One, two, three. Neister, Barry, and Gitter do up. So the top of the order do up for the Bucks. That's why some extra insurance doesn't matter. If Taylor does come back out regardless of the score, he finishes it to save his second of the year. 1-0 pitch. Bender missed just a bit outside. Two balls, one strike to count. Two in this inning for the Hawks. Very good crowd on hand today at Mayo Field. Most of them still here. Perfect day. 70 degrees at first pitch. Here's the 2-0 from Phillips. Curveball missed way outside. Three balls, no strikes now on Daney. Henry George is next. Daney's ahead 3-0. He's the number nine batter. George has had a nice day. He's reached three times. Hawkers out hitting Waterloo 12-5. 3-0 pitch. Outside ball four. Bases are loaded. So Henry George has a chance to potentially put the dagger in this one. He will bat with the bases loaded. Two outs. Hawkers have already brought in two this inning. Daney is on for the first time after drawing the walk. Daney's at first. Berkey at second. Aaron Simmons on third. Lefty on lefty. First pitch. Fastball is in there. 84 from Phillips. It's one no balls and a strike. These two will meet again next weekend. Sunday, Monday. Home and home series. First it's off to Thunder Bay and St. Cloud. 0-1, swing and a miss. He tried to take that the other way. And jumping out of his shoes a bit was George, it's 0-2. Trying to put it in play, make something happen. One big error by Waterloo has changed this game dramatically. 0-2 and that is a foul ball. Hit the knob of the bat, I think. I think it maybe hit him and then went off the glove of Rubicava to the backstop, but it is a foul ball off the knob of the bat. So new life for George. No balls, two strikes. Lefty Phillips against the lefty George. The center fielder for Rochester outside corner does not get the call. One ball, two strikes now on George. Game that is over three hours old, about three hours, 20 minutes. A little longer game the Honkers have had, but you're not going to complain about that. The Honkers take this one. Had to rally to do it. Still three outs to get. One, two offering. Is a bouncer back towards the netting and foul. Nobody warming up in the bullpen, so the ninth inning will likely belong to Keon Taylor. If George does something big here, then maybe that changes. As the manager for Waterloo, Casey Harms is out to talk with his catcher. Not sure what about. Maybe to check on him after maybe taking one off the arm. Two runs already in. George trying to make it more. He has walked twice. Has a bunt single. The speedy center fielder from Minnesota Duluth, Henry George. Count as one ball and two strikes. Here comes Phillips. And his foul back again. He's hanging tough. Look out, everyone. Back into the seats it goes. And little kid going to get the ball on that one. Good gesture by. Fan there giving it to the kid. One ball, two strikes the count. Craig Shepard on deck. George trying to give him an at bat. The kick and the pitch. Fastball low of the zone. It's called a strike. And that ends the inning. Hit the bottom part. Right at the knees. Henry George gets rung up, but the Honkers do add two big insurance runs. Top of the ninth, we go. Honkers eight. 
Waterloo 5. This is Rochester Hawkers Baseball on the Hawkers Baseball Network. Tini struck out four allowed, two walks and four hits. Phillips out of Kansas State. Who face Hartzell, Enriquez, and Hogan. Hartzell digging out in. And Phillips on the bump for Waterloo. A big eighth inning awaits us here. Phillips would love to put down the Huskies. One, two, three. That keeps the Bucs momentum on their side. We have it a miss at a fastball. No balls and a strength to count to Preston Hartzell. Phillips, it looks like, will get the eighth and probably the ninth. 0 oh and 1. Curveball just off the plate now. 1 and 1. Bucks 5, Huskies 5. Phelps kicks and goes, and a fastball found back. Now 1 and 2. Twelve hits for Duluth, eleven for Waterloo. It's been a good offensive day today for both teams. The Bucks finally have figured things out with runners in scoring position. They started out 0 for 4. The wave and a miss. And Phillips strikes down Hartsell. A big first down here in the eighth. The Bucks started off 0 for 4 in this ballgame with runners in scoring position. Since then, they are 5 for seven. Enriquez digs in. Enriquez doubled to left field in his second at bat of the ball game. He grounded out his first time and flew out in his last chance. Phillips rocks and goes. First pitch, change up, wave and a miss. He had Enriquez way out in front of it. Here is the 0-1 on the way from Phillips. A closed off delivery, way high and away. And fastball moves the count to a ball and a strike. One ball and a strike here from Phillips. High and away at 75, now two in one. Dylan getting the sign he wants. One out, top of eight, the two one. Curve ball popped him up left side, maybe into shallow left in the foul side, Elion underneath. And Elon makes the catch for out number two. Phillips induces a pop out for the second out of the inning, and now Matt Hogan. A left on left matchup for Dylan Phillips. Waterloo and Duluth are tied at five here in the eighth. Bottom eight, Lacrosse is up through to two in Eau Claire. Wisconsin Rapids leads six to five over Lakeshore. Wilmer up 6 nothing in the 8th over Bismarck. Rockford up 8-4 in the 8th against Traverse City. Sag on the outside, Coronado Phillips fastball. Kenosha leads Kokomo 7-1 in the ninth. Oh and 1. Lifted into right field. Get her a long run towards the gap. Still moving, still running, and he can make a running ground. That ball bounced maybe off his glove, off the wall, a throw into second base, and it skips all the way to third at Lorenzo Elon. I don't know if that ball hit off the glove of Gitter or if it's a true double. And it is a true double for Matt Hogan into deep right field, and the Huskies have the go-ahead run in scoring position with two out in the eighth, and now Bradley Norton.
Phillips kicks Sandils. Way high and away, 1-0. One ball and no strikes. Phillips to Norton. The lefty just misses outside. Now 2 0 to him. Duo, lofted foul to the right side. Two balls and a shank from Dylan Phillips to Bradley Norton. Wave and a miss now, two and two. Another good fastball from Dillon. 14 pitches, 9 strikes. Two and two from Phillips to Norton. The runner moving and it's grounded foul. Almost a nice play made there by the Duluth Huskies third base coach. Two and two. Here's a fly ball to the right side on the 2-2 two -two pitch. Foul ground. Ferguson will watch that ball land well out of play. Two and two now from Phillips to Norton. The left-hander Phillips on a Kansas State six appearances out of the bullpen this year. Good fastball, a solid curveball, and a solid changeup. Two and two. Lefty Roxanne goes, wave and a miss, sit down the eighth inning. Moves to the home half. Dylan Phillips, Strands, a go-ahead run at second. Ronabom, Waldridge, and Robocaba. Dylan Phillips. Phillips for Waterloo. One inning so far, two strikeouts, a hit allowed. Connor Anderson with three shutout frames of relief. One hit, two walks, and he struck out three. Phillips kicks and goes. Bunch shown, pulled back on, and taken for a ball outside by Marcelo. Remember, fans, with the new Northwoods League extra innings rules, Casey Harms asking whether or not Marcelo pulled the bat back. He wants to appeal, and he won't get an appeal for Mason Labuda. 1-0, Phillips to Marcelo. If we go to extras, we'll have a chance to see the new Northwoods League extra innings rules. A fly ball right at nice door, a couple steps in, and he'll make the catch for out number one. So there goes Marcella, one down in the top of the ninth. And now Lance Ford, four for four today. Three singles and a double. He's continuing to add to a great night today. Ford, a tremendous night. The Bucs have only gotten him out once, and that was on a single. She was thrown out trying to stretch it for another base. First pitch, breaking ball fouled off the end of the bat. Oh, and one. Waterloo. And Duluth, I mentioned those Northwoods laying extra innings rules. In extras, 
You start the inning with a man on second base. There's a strike down the pipe, 0 and 2. That is interesting. I wonder if we'll get our first chance to see it here tonight. Oh, and two from Phillips. Just missed the corner. Now one and two. The winner of this game is in sole possession of first place in the Great Plains East Division. A ball and two strikes from Phillips to Lance Ford. Dylan out of the stretch, kicks and goes. Chop past the mound, maybe two in, and Phillips will just go and tag out for it. Heck, why not? Phillips will go get him himself. Tagging out for it up the baseline. There's a ground out, one unassisted. So two out in the ninth, and here's Nick Kent. Tomorrow is June 6th. It'll be high school spirit night. Here in Waterloo, if you're coming to the game, wear your high school gear. Phillips kicks in, Jones. First pitch fastball down and in, 1 0. I wonder if our camera crew, our outstanding video crew, here with the Waterloo box, will have their high school gear on tomorrow. One ball and no strikes from Phillips to Kent. Chopper towards short. In comes Waldridge. Gloves on the run. His throw to first ends the inning. How about Bryce Waldridge at shortstop there for Waterloo. And there is the third out of the top of the ninth. We go into the bottom half of the frame. Welcome to Waterloo. Bryce Waldridge is on second base for the Duluth Huskies to begin the top half of the tenth. And now Dylan Phillips will, of course, in turn, be working with a man in second. And in scoring position. So top of ten. Waterloo and Duluth are tied at five. Here's Aaron Greenfield. Let's see if he bunts. He is not showing bunt. There's a strike in the outside corner there from Dylan Phillips. Waterloo. Five runs on 11 hits. Oh, one runner moving and it's fouled back at 82. Now 0-2 from Dylan Phillips to Aaron Greenfield. Personally, I like this rule for the purposes of speeding up the Northwoods League games and making sure that pitchers don't have to throw too many innings. Jimmy Smiley is warming in the Waterloo Box bullpen. Otherwise, we could be playing for a long time. It does put the home team, in my mind, at a, at a huge advantage. Because even though the road team gets it, the home team can get through that first inning. 0-2 off the plate, 1-2. and two. If the home team can get through that first top half of the 10th, they immediately have a man in scoring position. One and two to Greenfield. Just downstairs in 88. Robocaba will walk that ball out of the mound. Phillips didn't like that call. So he'll get a chat with his catcher. Nick Kent has good speed out at second base. And now Rubokaba back behind the dish. Two balls and two strikes. Phillips to Greenfield. The left-hander kicks and goes. A curveball bounces downstairs. A good block by Rubokaba. No advance by Kent out at second base. It is interesting how 
This affects the game. To see how teams will strategically play things. The Bucs thought the Huskies would bunt. Waterloo will have Blake Barry on second base. Now the runner moving. Sit down. Throw down to third. Is not in time as the ball squeaked out of Elon's glove. So Phillips strikes out Greenfield. And Nick Kent steals third base. Danny Zimmerman at the plate now. And now Matt Perrin will go out and chat with Dylan Phillips. And I wonder if this means they'll move to Smiley. Danny Zimmerman 0 for 4 with three strikeouts and a flyout. It's a big meeting here on the mound. Maybe just calming some things down as well for Waterloo. Casey Harms will come out and chat with his home plate umpire. Danny Zimmerman is at the plate for the Duluth Huskies. Three strikeouts in his last three plate appearances with just one out in the frame. A strikeout is exactly what Waterloo will be looking for. One down in the tenth. And now Phillips with a man on third base and one away. The box infield is playing in. There's Pinchy on the way, a breaking ball just outside for ball one at 72. Hard sell on deck for the Huskies. One and oh, Phillips to Danny Zimmerman. One oh, way down and in, and that goes all the way to the backstop, and Duluth has a lead. A wild pitch allows Nick Kent to score. And it is now a six to five Duluth Huskies lead over the Waterloo Bucks. So now the base is empty, a 2-0 count from Phillips to Zimmerman. I don't know if that run goes on Phillips' line. Pitching in extra innings. And here's a ground ball toward Short and up the middle for a base hit. As reaching on a base hit is Danny Zimmerman. Looks like he would have given them the lead anyway. Now Preston Hartzell with the chance. One for three, a single, a fly out. A walk and a strikeout. Will Christofferson is warming for Waterloo. That, line, that run does go on the line of Dylan Phillips. Hard sell digging in and no pardon me, this is a pinch hitter. As Milan Walla pinch hits. First pitch from Phillips, a bunt is shown out in front of the plate. Rubicaba, bare hand, throw to first is in time for out number two. Sack bunt, two to three on that sacrifice bunt. Zimmerman moves up to second base, and think about this too. Waterloo and any team, a home team trailing by two is a lot more difficult than a home team trailing by one in extra innings. You have a man on second base. Just adds a whole nother level of things to consider. For a team trying to win in these conditions. Ramon Enriquez at the plane with a man in scoring position in two outs. First pitch from Phillips, wave and a miss. They're at a change up. I think the away team in extra innings, your goal is to score two no matter what. You got to score two, really, in your minds, because the home team, if they only have to play for one run, it's a whole lot easier than having to play for two to tie. Oh, one just missed the inside corner. One ball and one strike from Phillips to Enriquez. An extra innings affair 
here in Waterloo. Duluth leads six to five. Ball and a strike from Dylan Phillips. Here's a well-struck fly ball to deep left field, looking back, still chasing it, and watching that ball sail out of here is Alex Radebaum. It's a two-run home run for Ramon Enriquez. And Duluth leads Waterloo 8-5 to five here in the top of the 10th. And now Matt Hogan will get a chance. Two for four, a single, two ground outs, and a double. A moonshot to left field off the bat of Enriquez. Duluth with three runs in the 10th. And I'm sure Waterloo can look back at this ball game and see plenty of opportunities that they could not deliver. First pitch on the way from Phillips, the strangling outside corner. The Bucks have had runners thrown out on the base pass, not that Duluth hasn't. The Bucs left the bases loaded in the second. Oh, and one from Phillips. Down and away, one ball and a strike to Hogan. So Nick Kent was a man put on second base for Duluth. The Waterloo Bucks will have Blake Barry at second in the bottom of the 10th. 1-1, wave and a miss, now 1-2. And for Dylan Phillips, these are three earned runs on his line. The lefty Phillips, a 1-2 on the way to Matt Hogan. Misses down and away a fastball. Now they can't even at two. It will be Ginner, Ferguson, and Campos in the bottom half of the 10. Hogan, a big day. Two hits, a double, a single. Good productive day for the Vanderbilt product. Ground ball out the glove of Phillips. Nice play by Wardridge. Throws to first and somehow gets it out. What a play by Bryce Wardridge. Tipped off the glove of Phillips. Bouncing up the middle. I want to see that again. Bryce Wardridge with a beautiful play. Ranging to his left up the middle. Deep in the hole and somehow throwing a laser to first for the out. Will be in line for the loss. The 5 nothing lean for the Rochester Hawkers. Uh, you'd like to maybe think that this game is over, but realistically, you just saw Waterloo battle back from down 9 nothing. so this lineup, anything is possible. Dylan Phillips on the air, 4.50 ERA, three appearances, six innings, he's allowed three earned. Seven strikeouts, two walks. Phillips on the hill to face Ryan Robleski. With the bases full and two away. First pitch on the way from Phillips. Misses downstairs at 80 miles an hour. A change up to Robleski. Robleski is from Nyack. Four thirty-two hitter and 10 games played there in Nyack. One ball and no strikes here from Dylan Phillips. Lefty rocks and goes. Way down and in on a breaking ball. Now 2-0. Good block again by Alonzo Rubalcaba. Something that he is pretty well known for. Being a very, very capable blocker of pitches. Byer ends up giving up five runs, but only one was earned. Two strikeouts and a rather uncomfortable six walks for Byer today. 2 and oh. Popped him up. Let's see if this gets the box down to the inning. Rodebaum looking for it, and he has it without having to move for out number three. We'll be back in the bottom half of the fifth. The box with a dude. And Simmons will step in. 0 for 2 today. A fly out, a ground out, and a walk. Left on left, Dylan Phyllis back on the hill for Waterloo. A little broken bat, grounder up the middle, backhanded by Campos. He flips it to first, and he'll have no chance. That bat will not survive as Simmons 
is aboard with that blue little single, and we see Trace Peterson with a man on first, and nobody out in the top of the sixth. Peterson singled today. He's whacked and grounded out as well. First pitch, breaking ball, misses down and in as Dylan Phillips wiped out on the hill. Strong wind blowing. 1-0, and, oh, and Rubacaba and our home plate umpire will go out and chat with Phillips after falling down, and I think he's all right. One ball and no strikes. Here from Dylan Phillips. Dillon from the stretch picks over to first. Simmons back in time. Phillips is hoping to get Waterloo through the sinks without allowing a run. Keep this a four-run ball game. Dillon misses downstairs with a fastball now 2-0. Two balls and no strikes. Just inside. Now 3 and 0. Oh. Dylan out of the stretch. Three balls out of the strike zone. So pardon, two and one the count from Phillips. This ball flipped foul. Count runs to two and two. Dylan with a good fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. He picks over to first as Simmons was moving. Throw back to second base. Flies into left field out of the hand of Rodebaum. As Simmons will get second base. And I don't know if Rodebaum will get an error or if Simmons will just get a stolen base. So at the moment, I think it's just a stolen base for Simmons. And they do give an error on Alex Radebaum. Throwing error by Alex Radebaum. Allowing Simmons to second base. The lefty Phillips. Rocks and goes on the 2-2. Wave and a miss. He got him. A nasty curveball. Strikes down Trace Peterson and now Brennan Schmidt. Oh, for two today. A walk, he struck out and grounded into a fielder's choice. Left on left. Here from Dylan Phillips. Waving a miss at a nasty breaking ball down and away. Phillips, six foot, two hundred and twenty pound, left-handed hurling freshman from Omaha, Nebraska, on a seventy-eight. Now the O2. Dylan is going to be a very exciting pitcher at Kansas State. He's already a standout offensive player. You can pitch in the upper eights as, and as long as you're left-handed. You're gonna be able to get a home somewhere. Oh, and two on the way from Phillips. Lifted into the air, right side at 89, and that ball tracks out of play. Aaron Simmons there at second base. If you remember, he reached on a bloop little single to Matt Campos over at the second base bag. Oh, and two from Phillips to Allen. Waterloo will set. Phillips trying to get through the top half. They 0-2 again. Poked foul. Allen staying alive. 
0-2 from Dylan Phillips to Mitchell Allen. Waterloo is in danger here today of falling below 500 for the first time all season. Entered this game at 6-6. Six six. Time called at the plate. Phelps will step off. Gets his sign from Rubicama. Now the 0-2. Just missed down and in at 90 miles an hour. One and two to Mitchell Allen. From the talented left arm of Dylan Phillips. And the one two on the way. Dylan gets a sign he wants. Now he goes. Breaking ball down and in. Knocked down by Rubo Caba. Simmons almost caught off of second base. Trying to move up, and then he slammed down the brakes after Rubo Caba put a good block on that ball. So the Countess goes with off speed again to him. He's laid it off so far. Maybe a change up on the 2-2. Instead they go fastball up and they just miss on it high and tight. Truck or van for as little as $100 down. Cars and credit will finance. Qualifying's easy. No banks, no credit checks. At Cars and Credit, your job is your credit. Stop in today for $100 down on your next vehicle. In Rochester, Owatonna, Winona, Albert Lee, and Mankato. Or online at carsandcredit.com. It's not just a glove. It's the feel in your hand. It's the un... Ferg one for two, a single and a strikeout today. Maybe a change up on the 2-2. Instead they go fastball up and they just miss on it high and tight. Truck or van for as little as $100 down. Cars and credit will finance. Qualifying. Instead they go fastball up and they just miss on it high and tight. Truck or van. Box Radio Network. Get out. Back. Nice play again that Danny made on pass. Is it on the road? And if they lose here, they are really, really in desperate need of... And now Dylan Phillips makes his Waterloo box debut as a hitter. Picked up the win in relief last night for Waterloo. Phillips at Kansas State this past spring had a monstrous true freshman campaign. Set the program record for home runs by a freshman with 10. 27 RBI at Kansas State. First pitch to Phillips is 85 in the outer half for a strike. 21 pitches, 14 strikes so far from Trevor Candy. Society wants from his catcher Garcia. Phillips lofts one back at us, now 0-2. Dylan doesn't strike out very often. A K rate of 15.9% at Kansas State this spring. Kind of a lower number. NCAA average K rate is right around 18%. 0 2, fastball off the plate at 87 miles an hour there from Trevor Cannon. One and two. On the way from Cannon to Phillips. Driver from the stretch, kicks in, he owns the slider off the plant at 75, down two and two. Two balls and two strikes here from Kenny to Phillips. Lefty rocks and deals a ground ball towards second, gloved by Elliott to his left, tosses to first, and Trevor Kenny has a one. Damage for the most part by just getting Waterloo to hit beat a ton of baseballs into the ground. The box are hitting 83% ground balls. That is extremely non-conducive to scoring ground. First pitch to Phillips is a fastball in her half, one and all. Getting his change speeds on his fastball. 
rescinded his laws about 81 and did it up at 87. What a tap towards second, rather south, was led by Elliott to his left, throw it at your car, Brett. Happening start. Oh well, Dylan Dillon steps in. And now right now to finish his left handed heavy, Waterloo by Slider. They finally chased him. His first hit from the stop was driving the outside corner at 96. Stock oh, in his collegiate career has 59 and 3 innings, 33 blocks, 50 blocks, striker. Junior year of college one. Oh, and one for the right hander. 95, fouled out from one side, now 0 2. And this is a huge shift for Waterloo. They see 83 86. One side, now first two pitches to Dylan Billson at 95 and 96. Oh, and two here from the right-hander stop. Now back at 94. Nothing that Dylan Phillips doesn't see. Big 12 on Friday night. No balls, two strikes, no down. Hit it, hit it, they bottom half of seven. Doc rocks and deals. A slider called striker this past spring. Dangerous back in the center hole for one of First pitch, flips uh, all towards the left side. A long run for Barnes, and that ball will get out of play. Near the new bullpen box seats here at Cosmeter Square at Riverfront Stadium. You can call the Bucks to get off to inquire about them. They look really, really nice. Tell you what, if I didn't have these great seats up here at the press box, I would probably work on uh, getting a group together and and you have those bunch of box movements here. Oh, one, way of a miss at yeah, 93 upstairs now, 0 oh, 2 to Dylan Brooks. The Bucks are down to their final strength. Cole Brooks on first. 0 oh, 2 here from Stock. He'll step off and consider things before this pitch. Dylan Phillips right back on the rubber. Now here it is. The 0-2 from Joey Stump. Going for a three-inning save. This is downstairs at 86. He kind of lost his footing and taking second base on that wild pitch is Cole Brook. I wonder if he missed that land spot there on the hill. Blind ball and two strikes. Back to Dylan Phillips. Right hander kicks Dale. Jess presses her knees at 90. Now 2 and 2. St. Cloud is out here. The box 7 to 4. 2 and 2. Nubbed up the first baseline very weakly. Picked up by Stocky. Collides with Wilcox. Throw to first. And the ball game is over. Belted 10 home runs for the Wildcats. Knocked in just 27, though. Not a lot of traffic in front of him. He hit just 238, but still managed to post a 754 OPS. Phelps Jackson ranking ball down and in 1 0. That 238 batting average, though, was completely pinned down by a 242 batting average on balls in play. Usually at the collegiate level, that mark, which is almost entirely based off of what, tends to dwell around 330. So in reality, Dylan Phillips will be looking at his sophomore year with the expectation, probably, of his stats anyway, to be hitting roughly 320. Another quick back pick to second. Nice door doesn't slide, and the tag is applied, but he is in time. Just barely slapping his cleat on the third base side of the second bag. 1-0 to Dylan Phillips. Usually when you have power hitters post such low batting averages, it's due to a ton of strikeouts, but Phillips doesn't strike out for power bat. 1-0, nice door not being held on this time. Another breaking ball wasted downstairs. 2-0 on Phillips. I think Larson knows that this is a hitter that you don't want to mess around with, but after missing back-to-back -back off speed, I wonder if he has to come somewhere in the zone with a fastball. I bet that's what Dylan Phillips is 
considering right now the left-handed batter's box. Looking for a pitch in his spot. The 2-0 Phillips gets a fastball, but it's off the point, 3-0. A promising start for Waterloo with the Mike Nystor double. So it's into the right center field alley. Blake Berry had a grab ball to third. They took a weird hop on Joey Daney. Still able to recover and make a play. 3 0. And it's ball four just off the black. And Dylan Phillips takes four outside of the zone. He's reached base for the first time in his Waterloo Bucks career. Barry holds it second on that air and throw. Two errors on the Rochester Hawkers today, both of them in this inning, and here is Dylan Phillips. Drew Locke in his first chance. A strike in the knees, thrown by Evan Larson. Waterloo with a four run second. Little Jim reached on a another single. Olsen then gained pings due to an error by the second baseman, Craig Shepard. Oh, and one. Phillips takes a breaking ball off his back foot. And he begins walking towards first, which is a good sign. And he'll end up jogging to first. So Phillips is all right on that hit by pitch. And if you're Evan Larson, I think you... Now, no matter what, you'd want to get the hitter out of the plate, but it's almost a good thing that that was... Jack Thielen had a... 15.8% caught stealing rate at UW-Milwaukee this spring. It's awfully low. And Nystor is moving on the first pitch. We're going to miss at a curveball downstairs. Mike Nystor is in with a stolen base. Oh, and won the kill on Dylan Phillips. Nystor steals second. That's his fourth bank of the year. He is Blazing fast. And he's a great base runner. Mike Nystor with that stolen base. And this is one of the more incredible numbers that a Waterloo Bucks player possesses in their career. Mike Nystor now has been successful on 46 of 48 attempted steals in his collegiate career, including Summer Bowl. Big late off of second. And now, as I mentioned, a two-out single by Dylan Phillips with nice throw in first. Essentially, it's a wash. Jerry keeps hitting going, but you don't get a run on it. And you need the next man to get a hit. But now a Dylan Phillips single with Mike nice throw on second. Oh, boy, howdy, he can move. And that can turn into a run. His shortstop crashes the bag. Nice throw takes a hop step back. Now he will walk back as Nemo steps up. Nice throw, a cold Nemo's blood. It's fucking Kind of gave him the, okay, let's see who trying to pick me up. Oh, and one here to Phillips. Way I'm going to miss it, a fastball. Dylan wanted that pitch. Thought about upset with himself that he couldn't come up with it. It's tough to hit those high fastball. <laughs> no balls and two strikes. I mentioned earlier, Phillips does not strike out all that often. Especially for a power bat. K Rain is a freshman, right around 15% at Kansas State. Here is the 0 2. And he lays off the high fastball, one ball and two strikes. 46 for 48 for Mike Nystor on the bases. That is a stolen base success rate north of 96%. Given his body of attempts, that is unbelievable. Now Phillips lines us into right field, a long run for Schmidt, and that ball will land in front of him for a base hit. Nice score comes in to score on a Dylan Phillips RBI single. The stolen base for Waterloo turning into a run. As Phillips has his first Bucks RBI, and Waterloo leads at 500. Good piece of hitting by Phillips, got a pitch out over the plate. Can't imagine that that's where Nimmo wanted it. Yeah, nice throw scores easily. He has walked, been hit by a pitch, and is single. From Omaha, Nebraska. Played at Creighton Prep High School. 
First pitch to Phillips, lifted into high left center field, over out it is Simmons. With one out, Nystor will be tagging. Simmons makes the catch, and Mike Nystor scores on a Dylan Phillips fielder's choice. And the inning turns over to Alex Radabaugh. Sacrifice fly, I should say, that helped him out of Dylan Phillips. Yeah, hit by pitch, a single, and a fly out. A sack fly, that is. Off of his bat. Now to Kansas State, 10 home runs there this spring. True freshman record for the Wildcats as he takes a fastball on the knees at 91 for strike one. Nice door on second. Playing around a little moth out there. Bugging him a bit. Now ironic, he's been bugging the Rochester Hawkers all night long. Oh, and one here to Phillips having a very nice night. He pops one out left side of the infield towards foul ground is Daney. He'll get underneath and make the catch. Dylan Phillips now the left-hander. A lot of lefties in this Waterloo lineup. That would be the challenge for Lamash. He might make a breaking pitch, a slider. More difficult to throw. you got to work it hard to throw that inside to the left because that one's hit in the air on the first pitch. Left center field. George is back. He's looking up and it's gone. Two pitches, one single, one home run, and the Bucks have a 2-0 lead. Dylan Phillips on the first pitch and Oppo Popo to the left center gap and the Bucks are on the board first once again. It's 2-0 Waterloo. First home run of the year for the Bucks. It comes off the bat of Dylan Phillips. Once again, the Hawkers are going to find themselves playing from behind against this Bucks team on the two-run shot by Phillips. Arguably wasting absolutely no time this inning. Brooks singled on the first pitch. Phillips went after the first pitch and knocked it over the left center wall. George, no other option. Just watch it go out of the ballpark. So the Mavs with no clear getting ready to do battle at Wade Stadium in Duluth. Bismarck St. Cloud going on later on tonight, as well as Wilmer and Lacrosse. On the lap leads Lakeshore 2 0, Kalamazoo 3 2 lead at Kenosha. Calder City 3 0 over Battle Creek, bottom third. Markers have stranded four through three innings, last inning, they their best opportunity. Two on, one out. Ryan McCleskey flew out to left, and then Tristan Peterson got back picked. By Alonzo Rubicama behind the dish, and that ended the inning. Here's Lamasters to lead off the as he spikes a fastball way in tight on Dylan Phillips, and that is how the fourth inning begins. One ball, no strikes on Phillips. Three nothing Bucks. Two in the second, one last inning. Here's the 1 0, as that one misses low and in the dirt. To the backstop it goes, 2 0 on Phillips. Rubicaba, a notable standout for the Bucks on defensive purposes. He's already thrown out a base here. That was Henry George. That was last in. Then he also picked off Tristan Peterson. 2 0 fastball is in there, taking it for a strike. Was Phillips. It's 2 and 1. That all happened last inning. George was a leadoff walk. Stole second on the first pitch and got thrown out. And he picked off Peterson to end the inning. Here's the 2 1. Fastball hits the knees, outside edge, two balls, two strike, good pitch from the Masters. Masters had a school scoreless inning in the first, but the Bucks have tallied them three runs in the last two. They have five hits against them. Runs the runs Masters gave up in and out in last year's was three. Two, two pitch, got him out in front. If you can get out of this with no damage, you're not through yet. Got to get Dylan Phillips, and he has the big buck hit today. He had a two run homer in the second. Another lefty at the plate. He's looking to get out of it one pitch at a time. First pitch misses outside again. Crowd here doesn't like it, but as I've said all afternoon, that's been consistently called. Maybe a bit low as well, but that outside corner has just been a tough hit today. So plenty of the at bat to go. 1 0 the count. Here comes Lane. That's all high that time. It's 2 0. He was down 3 0 to Cole Brooks. Battle back on the flew out to left. And kept every runner stationary. 
lane a possibility to get out of the city with no damage. It would be a huge victory for Rochester. The bases were loaded with one out. 2-0. Outside, 3-0. Not really close, it missed low as well. It's three balls, no strikes to count. And same exact situation in Cole Brooks. 3-0 is the count. Was able to battle back, got them to fly out. This could be a game change in that bat with a mistake. Hawkers down 3-1. Hawks have them loaded. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside corner, not called. It's ball four. And a walk and a run has been walked in. Nothing really to say there. That only missing with a curly ball. Missing going curly down there ball. consistently. I'm not sure you really can't get it up. And he has been able to get it up. That's when he wants it up. That's when he wants it up. That's when he's throwing it when he's ahead. He's got to keep living down there. Keep living down there. Curve ball thrower. Curve ball thrower. Break even pitch. Break even pitch. Fastball just missed inside. Maybe a little below the knees. Maybe a little below the knees. Two and one. It's two and one. Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Dylan Nebraska. Phillips. Dylan Phillips. Kansas State, State Wildcats. Ten home runs last year. Ten home runs last year. There's a grounder to short. There's a second base. Short. Play second base. He'll throw, throw on and throw him out. Throw on and throw him out. The NBA. So it's Ben Rowden at short, Cole Pengilly at second, and Mason Cruz behind the plate. Phillips hits a sharp grounder to second. There's Pengilly, throws to first for at number one. Speaking of home runs and Kansas State <laughs> players, Phillips has a solo, has a uh, two-run home run of his own this season for Waterloo. He set the single-season freshman record with 10 long balls at Kansas State this past spring. Ball one downstairs. I mentioned in the first uh, Caleb Little Jim at bat that with Mason Cruz behind the dish, he should know Little Jim pretty well. I don't think he caught a fastball right down the middle of the knees. 1-0 foul back by Phillips. Now one ball at his turn. Phillips appears to have a very promising collegiate career ahead of him. A ball and a strike to him. Dill hits a grab ball to first. Skyler Culver makes a play. He'll take it to first base and center Nick Schmidt. Elon was trying to punt for a sacrifice. He bunted it too hard, but it ended up working out as a one of sails on the catcher. Mason Cruz and a wild pitch will allow Little Jim to take second. And now he's looking for third as the catcher lollygagged a little bit. Getting to that baseball, a wild pitch allows Little Jim to move all the way to third base. And now a man is 90 feet away for Dylan Phillips at a 2 0 count. And now our umpires are going to converse about what I'm not sure. I wonder what's going on back there, whether or not that ball went out of play, maybe, is the question. Cruz was maybe asking. And they're going to say that Little Jim will have to stay at second. Why would he stay at second on a ball that went out of play? I think, I guess it's a one base ball out of play on that one out pitch. So it ends up base running, and still good for Little Jim, but he just stays at second. And now Casey Harms is going to argue with Pearson White Cloud to Uke Nunez about the enforcement of that out of play. So that's why Little Jim is on second and not third. They ruled that the ball went out of play. I didn't get a good look on where that ball ended up nestling itself in before Cruz picked it up. Cruz had enough time to pick the ball up and throw it to third. You see, I'm still talking about this. Now, realistically, this won't hurt Waterloo that much because Phillips would still have to have a base in. Just going a little jam, assuming there wasn't another wild pitch once he was on third to let him swim. And I think, knowing Little Jim's speed, he's still going to be able to score from second base on a base hit by Phillips. Arms is taking a long time with this discussion, and that might be a little bit of strategic thinking by Casey as well, just to make Smusik wait a little bit longer on this argument. So some fans might not like how long this argument is lasting with Casey Harms, but 
this is a pretty nice strategic play by the umpire. You can see Smithick on the hill is not too enthused about this. Can we get a look at Smithick? Again, uh, give you an idea what his thoughts are. Been throwing some warm-up pitches, and now Matt Perea talking a little bit about those warm-up pitches, I think. Casey Arm still discussing with Houston White Cloud to Hooken Unions. Let's see what this next pitch looks like from Smithson. After that long discussion by Casey Harms, I like that. And now they'll let Smithick throw a couple more warm-up pitches. Maybe two more. That is a really, really smart, heady managerial move by Casey Harms. That's one of those little things that you don't really pick up. Pushing that argument to make the pitcher wait longer. Now a 2-0 to Dylan Phillips. Little Jim is moving it, misses high in sight. The throw down to third is not in time. So Little Jim gets third anyway. And if anything, he gets to pad his stats with another stolen base. It's a 3 0 count to Dylan Phillips, the ninth batter of the inning to head to the plate for Waterloo. Little Jim has the second steal of the year. 8 to 1 Waterloo over Mankato. Little Jim 90 feet from scoring there at third base. 3 0, Phillips takes ball four high and away. And now a lot of power for the left handed bat. Ten long balls of Kansas State. This fast sprint. The righty kicks and goes. Phillips takes ball one downstairs underneath the glove of Enriquez. And now taking third is Gitter with Woodridge. Up to second. I wonder if they'll give a wild pitch or a pass ball. That ball caught a lot of the mitt of Enriquez. And now two men are in scoring position with nobody out for Dylan Phillips. A very good start thus far for Waterloo. A promising inning here in the second. If Phillips can't get some bat on ball. 1 and 0. Way outside, ball two. Well, at this rate, he may just want to keep tanking until he gets a strike. Rail has lost control here in the second. Very patient Waterloo Bucks team at the plate. The 2 0. Phillips loops us into the air left side, down the line, a long run for Marcelo towards foul territory, and that ball gets out of play. Now near the bullpen field boxes, which are available for fans to rent for a game. They're a really, really dandy setup. Contact Corbin at WaterlooBucks.com. More information regarding those bullpen uh, box seats. Plus, you get to interact with a bunch of players out there. 2 1, Phillips rockets a ball in right field. That's down for a base hit, and it'll score two. Gitter scores. Phillips around first. Wardridge crosses home. Here's a throw second down in time. It's a two run double for Dylan Phillips, and Waterloo is on the board. Getter and Wardridge scoring for Waterloo as Dylan Phillips picks up RBI number six and seven. Top of Duluth, three to nothing. Really nice ball game so far for the Bucks. Tyler Miller has done a good job of working out of trouble. He's been competing hard on the mound for Waterloo, not giving up or bearing away. When men are on base, the first pitch to Phillips outside from Alex Rayo at 60 pitches so far. Tyler Miller over 68 pitches has whiffed six. Has uh, picked up six whiffs. 1-0 now. Phillips lifts the ball high to right field. Playing in was Hogan. He'll watch that ball land over his head right at the base of the wall. Dylan Phillips will coast into second with a stand-up double. His second of the game is a ball bounces all the way to third. Phillips is two for two now with two double. Their bullpen, they're not throwing it quite yet. Rails first pitch to Dylan Phillips. This is trying to inside corner. Bucks fans might get their first look at Jack Dolak tonight. 
University of San Diego, right-hander, true freshman. Came in with Woolridge yesterday. A oh, one wham and a miss. Bass Potter Phillips now 0 and 2. Rubel Kala. On deck for Waterloo. Ray appearing in here on Dylan Phillips and the 0 2. On the way after a little bit, he takes a longer pond. Dylan half swing. And it's a called strike three. A very late called strike three. Keep an eye on Matt Campos. He might be running here. Get himself into scoring position for the films. First pitch to Dylan is a strike of the letters in 93. Dylan, two doubles today. You scored two of the Bucks, four runs. In fact, Phillips drove in the first two runs of the game, and he scored the last two. He's responsible for all four runs. Oh, one off the plate, now one and one. Great combined pitching effort by Waterloo to get outs when they've needed them. One ball and one strike from Pierce to Phillips. Campos on first. Got a decent lead over there. Phillips flies one foul over our heads, now one and two. I wonder if the Bucs have asked Campos to move on this two strike count. Rubel Kaba on deck for the Bucs. They're catching. One and two to Dylan Phillips. Here's a nod of the head. And here he comes on the one two. Dylan takes the cold strike three right on the inside corner. Didn't like that pitch. But it's three pitches, three strikes, and a strikeout. Starts it off. And if you go back to last night, that's seven straight strikeouts for this express pitching staff. Remember, Philip Sykes came in, pitched the final two innings of that seven-inning game in lacrosse and struck out the six batters that he faced in the sixth and seventh. So here's Phillips now, another left-handed bat against the lefty Ewald, who will deliver just outside on a fastball, 1-0. We don't have the speed gun working yet, but we'll, uh, I'm sure, get it adjusted and ready to go here shortly. As Ewald winds in the 1-0. We'll miss the outside corner. And David Lamana catching back there, trying to frame up that pitch, couldn't get it called. Phillips a 250 batter so far on the season, three runs and seven RBI, and that one homer we mentioned earlier. The 2-0 from Ewald is lined hard past him, diving and not making the play is Matt Botcher at short. Into left center field, up with it is Myers. A hard turn from Phillips at first. He will have himself a single. That one sailed right past Tim Ewald's right-hand glove. Wasn't able to make the play. And single into center is first time up, standing in. Hit it pretty hard, too. Right past Tim Ewald back in the first inning. And Courtney Zekin joining us from... Wisconsin Credit Union, and again, we can't thank them enough for their sponsorship, and uh, we talked about it. It doesn't matter what community it is. You guys are involved, whether it's our Dunn St. Croix coverage over on uh, Moose Country for basketball and football, or, of course, our Menominee coverage over on News Talk WMEQ or uh, on 98.7 The Brew for our Eau Claire coverage. It's uh, always fun to get to read off the name of Wisconsin Credit Union as there's a strike in the lower outside corner, and I know that's something that's been big there. Whether, you know, we talk about the events that you guys will be doing here this summer, but supporting local athletes. I know that's yep. a, a big piece of what you do also, um, to, to let those athletes know that, that you're part of this community and, and that you are excited about what they're doing out here. Yeah, absolutely. It's so much fun just to get involved and to see them, and, you know, they are always so grateful, mm -hmm. and that's, that's really awesome to see as well. High fastball there from... Ewald into Phillips that he swung right through, and now Ewald is a strike away from getting out of the inning. Two down here in the top of the third, and a one nothing Express lead. So the Express giving him a little bit of cushion here, but not much. So Ewald having to pitch well here in this third to try to get out of the inning. He got two double plays to help him out in the first and second. Now he just needs an out to get out of the third. The 0-2 is a fastball swung on and miss, and Dylan Phillips is down on strikes. Two men left, no hits, no errors, and no runs scored. Courtney, thanks so much for coming up. We appreciate a little bit of time here, but I think they're making the move. Is Four bucks. Stop by the... On the Express, come to the plate. 
It'll be Dylan Phillips now on the mound. Tim Ewald, or pardon me, uh, at the plate rather. Phillips to face Baker, who's now on the mound. Tim Ewald went four innings, two hits, giving up one run, but he's responsible for the two men on. Six walks and five strikeouts and 85 pitches, and just 19 batters faced. So Baker comes home, and it's a fastball a little outside. The count now 1 0 here to the left handed batting Phillips. Baker a little bit more around the zone, a little more consistent. That's what Dale Varsho is hoping for here. The 1 1 score line here in the fifth. The 1 0 from Baker is on the outside corner for a strike, and it's 1 and 1. Quick look around the Northwoods League out of town scoreboard here tonight. Get you that in a moment. Now the 1 1 on the way from Baker is in the dirt. Nice scoop there by Lamana. And count now two balls and a strike. Wilmer up 3 to 2 in Duluth on the Huskies. The top of the fifth in that ball game. Thunder Bay and Mankato are tonight tied at 2 in Mankato tonight. Top of the sixth in St. Cloud. The Rocks and the Hawkers are tied at 1 in the bottom of the fourth. Baker sets chin high, looks towards second. The 2 1 is swung on a miss. A high heat blew it right by him, and it's 2 and 2. Lacrosse still all over Bismarck tonight. 4 to 1. The Loggers lead the Larks in the bottom of the six. Larks have played a lot of home games to start off the season. They have a, a great record sitting at 8 and 2, but uh, when you got to make that long trip from Bismarck and start playing some road games, you expect that record to maybe go back as there's a grounder up the middle should be two on to short for one the relay throw to first is in time Conley held his foot on a 4-6-3 double play Botcher's throw was wide of the bag but Conley held his back foot and an argument's about to ensue here from Casey Harms the field manager for the Bucks. you can sit, tell Sam Price a first base umpire he pointed as if Conley held his foot and Price is going to, pardon me, Harms rather, is going to get a little bit of discussion here with Casey Harms. I don't think there's much argument. He said he held his foot. He saw it the whole way, and that's, uh, that's the way it's going to be, whether it's right or not. That's the call. So 4-6-3. Again, we may get a shot at looking at a replay of that, but nonetheless. One away. Here comes Dylan Phillips. Dylan Phillips grounded into that 4-6-3 double play as he flares this one into left. Should be playable for Burton. Comes on and makes a catch. And there's two away. Some quick outs. Alec Baker. I mean, this is what happens when you throw hard. Look out for Dwayne Marshall as he gets Lorenzo Elon swinging on a great curveball. So now Marshall with a way out of the inning. Just needs an out anywhere to keep Mike Nystor stranded out on the base pass. Here is Dylan Phillips. Phillips has been a very good two-way player for the Bucs. We saw him pitch yesterday, pitched a very good inning. The left-hander from Kansas State, completing his freshman year. Batting from the left-hand side against Dwayne Marshall. No score here in the top of the first inning. Runner at second, Mike Nystor for Waterloo. First pitch is fouled off by Phillips. That will head into the party deck and out of play. 0-1 the count to Phillips. Phillips yesterday pitched... An inning and a third. Had gave up just one hit. He struck out three. This guy might transition maybe more into a pitching role as more position players show up. But he's been impactful as well for Waterloo. Batting 250 on the year. Eighth game as a hitter. Oh, when the count, Berkey over to cover second, but stepping off is Marshall. Thought about throwing over. Certainly, you got to keep an eye on Nice Door. You have a speedy runner out there. He's going to look to get in your head any way you can as a pitcher. And stepping off again is Marshall. As he stares down at Berkey, gets the sign from him. Shortstop going to give the sign to the pitcher whether or not to throw over. Neister gets his lead. Berkey right behind him. He'll back up. Count is 0-1 to Dylan Phillips. Marshall looks him back, comes back to the plate. A breaking ball that drops into the dirt. Phillips took it for ball one. One ball, one strike. Hawkers have won the last two against these Bucks. 8-5 last Sunday, 6-1 yesterday after taking a tough 7-1 loss at Riverfront Stadium in their first meeting of the year. Dwayne Marshall trying to deliver a great start once again for the Hawkers. That's been their calling card this year. Break even pitches, a line shot into center field. George charges, reaches down and makes the catch. The speedy Henry George tracks it down 
And Rob Dillon flips of a base hit and an RBI. As we have one gone here in the top of the fourth inning. That is the sixth straight buck retired by Dwayne Marshall. So here's Dylan Phillips. He lined out to Henry George. That ended the first inning. It was a nice catch by George reaching down below the knees. Took away a base hit and an RBI for Blake Phillips. Honkers by two. They lead it 2 nothing on a pair of hits. Each team has two apiece. First pitch to Phillips. Setting up low and away is Robleski. He hits the spot right on. 0-1. Didn't have to move the glove at all. Marshall, the command working well, as mentioned before. Next pitch will be his 45th. He has thrown 31 strikes so far. Has just one walk. 0-1 to Phillips as a slider that comes inside. Into the dirt it goes. One ball, one strike to Phillips. Phillips in the, on the year. Five hits and 21 at-bats. Now he's driven in seven. Second on the team. RBI is just behind Caleb Little. Jim, who gets the night off. Break even pitch is a curveball in the dirt, taken for ball two. Two and one the count. Phillips and Little Jim, teammates at Kansas State. Some good Division I talent coming over to the Bucks this year. Marshall working the left hander, Dylan Phillips, 2 1. That's low and away. Three and one now to Phillips, the first baseman for Waterloo. Marshall has three strikeouts so far. Most innings he's pitched so far is three, and he has set that season high already today with three in the third as he retired Elon to start off this inning. 3-1 is a chopper off the foot of Phillips, and we have a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Most strikeout so far in appearance by Marshall this year is three. That came in his second one on June the 1st against these Bucks. That was back at Riverfront Stadium. Did give up an earned run in that appearance. Walked two in two innings of work. Trying to find a way to settle in at the mound. He has been so far so good. Three earned, has given up earned runs in each of his first three relief appearances. Here's the 3-2. Fastball hit in the air. Center field. This has hit a ton. Back is George at the warning track, and that one's going to go. Dylan Phillips takes that one out of the right center field. One of the deepest parts of the ballpark. Dylan Phillips got all of that one. And the Bucks cut the deficit in half. It's 2-1. Phillips did not miss that one. Went down and barreled it up. Maybe the longest home run we have seen this year at Miller at Mayo Field. I beg your pardon. He got all of that one. Home run number two for Phillips. That ties Little Jim for the team lead with two. Six home run of the year for Waterloo. First run picked up against Dwayne Marshall so far tonight. 2 1 the hill, the lead for Rochester. In the fourth inning, here is the cleanup batter and getter. Christian Peterson Berkey had an error, but he makes up with it with a nice play there to throw out Lorenzo Elon. Makes a lot of nice plays over there, has a few errors, saw one already. That is a great play that he made look relatively easy. Backhand fading away from the base, back foot throw in midair, right on line. 6 3 on the put out. Two up, two down. Here's Dylan Phillips, the lone producer of the Waterloo offense today. First pitch to the left hand hitting first baseman. It's a hanger that missed outside. Just off the mark. Tried to back to a curveball. 1 0 to Phillips. Phillips had a solo home run over the right field wall in the third inning, or fourth inning. Check that. On a 3 2 count. 1 0 curveball. That's in there that time. Hit the back door that time. Ball and a strike to Phillips. One for two. Had the big fly and a line out to Henry George in center. He's hit the ball hard a couple times today. 1-1 one, one comes inside with a slider that time. That tied him up. Good pitch. Lone in the dirt. Buried it and he got Phillips the chase. One ball, two strikes on the Waterloo first baseman. A two-way player from Kansas State. Pitching in the third shutout baseball yesterday. Gets the call at first base today. Has done some DHing as well. Marshall looking to punch him out. Here's the one two. He got him swinging. Pulled the string in a what have you swing from Dylan Phillips. Not a full throttle swing as he strikes him out to end the sixth. A one, two, three inning for Marshall to the bottom of the sixth. It's Rochester three. These very own Waterloo Bucks. Back eight days ago, picked up the save. He struck out five and in two innings pitched. He faced the minimum, six batters. He struck out five of them.
the side-winding right-hander from Georgetown College in Kentucky. Has yet to be scored upon this year. Fourth game for him. He will face Phillips to start it off. Fastball is down the middle at 86. And away we go in the ninth inning. Honkers by three, four to one. Dylan Phillips, Jake Gitter, Matt Campos do up. Four walk. 0-1 pitch, a fastball that is bunted foul. And it's quickly 0-2 on Dylan Phillips. Keon Taylor has been one of the most effective relievers for Rochester this year. He has struck out 11 in five innings pitched. Has not walked a batter yet. A couple hits allowed. That's it. And what is his next inning of work trying to save this one down? Second meeting against the Bucks this year. 0-2. Change up. Missed outside at 79. That is his signature strikes. Trying to keep the Bucks off the scoreboard. Trying to sweep. 